Welcome to James Buchanan's Wheatland, which is owned and operated by Lancaster History. Today, with the help of Lancaster History and periodic presidents, we're going to be taking a look at the home of our 15th president, James Buchanan. So join us for another Lesson on the Road. Mr. Buchanan was a huge fan of George Washington, and he was extremely proud that he was the last president to be born during George Washington's presidency. Here in Wheatland, there are two opposing lithographs. On one wall, you see President George Washington. On the other wall, just opposing him, is the owner of Wheatland himself, James Buchanan. When James Buchanan moved into Wheatland, he had a series of bells installed from the attic to the basement to call the domestic workers. The bell over my right shoulder was used every time a visitor entered the house. I guess before he installed these bells, he received the no bell prize. No, probably not, no. These stairs, which lead visitors from the broad hall to the upstairs portions of the home, are accompanied by this striking railing, which is made up of two different types of woods. The handrail is made up of imported rosewood, while the spindles are made from curly maple. In total, there are 111 spindles on this staircase. Welcome to James Buchanan's dining room here at Wheatland. This room is lit with an abundance of natural light, which is let through by two large windows on either side of the room. The Venetian blinds on these windows are 100% original to the house when it was constructed in 1828. And the light in this room is reflected by the two mirrors on either side of the dining room table. Also hanging in this room are a lithograph of George Washington on his way to be inaugurated as President of the United States and a painting of Fort Washington from the Maryland side of the Potomac River. In this room, James Buchanan would have dined with family and with friends. He loved sauerkraut. He also loved Delaware shad and the strawberries that were grown here at Wheatland. James Buchanan also was a huge, huge fan of ice cream. So the gold and maroon china set to my right has kind of an interesting history. It was purchased by Harriet Lane for her uncle, James Buchanan, as he was the minister to Great Britain. And as such, part of his job involved entertaining dignitaries and guests and used this china to do so. He then used this china in the White House during his presidency. Welcome to the parlor, which was used to entertain guests here at Wheatland. The focal point of this room is the fireplace behind me. This fireplace underwent massive changes in 1850, and the marble that you see here most likely came from a quarry in King of Prussia. Soon after Buchanan moved into Wheatland, he noticed that the many fireplaces created a draft in the mansion that kept it cold in the winter. To fix this problem, Buchanan put a coal furnace in the basement and put ventilators like that in the bottom of the fireplaces. So during this time, entertaining guests in a parlor like this with a stereoscope and viewing three-dimensional images was a very popular thing to do. That might seem like a really high-tech piece of equipment, but three-dimensional images actually work on a pretty simple concept. You see, all humans, and a lot of mammals, have what's called binocular vision. That means that we see the world through two different cameras, our right eye, and our left eye. And our brain puts both images together into one picture. That picture gives us things like distance, height, and more importantly, depth. Let's do a small experiment to illustrate this. If you put your thumb out in front of your face, focus on something beyond your thumb, then close one eye, open it, close the other eye, open it, and do that back and forth, your thumb will appear to move left and right when it's not. That's your binocular vision at work. A stereograph works in a similar way. You'd put your eyes through this viewfinder, look through these two lenses, then look at a card with two different pictures on it. Both pictures look nearly identical, except that when they were taken, the camera that took it took it an image of this landscape from one angle and then moved over probably about two and a half inches, because that's the width of your eyes, and took the same image again. So they're both the same landscape, they're just from two different vantage points. The stereoscope works by focusing your attention on these two images, but separating your left eye from your right eye using this small partition or wall. When your brain puts both these images together, you see three dimensions. There are two large portraits in the parlor, and the one behind us is of Harriet Lane. Harriet Lane is unique amongst White House First Ladies, serving as hostess for the only president never to marry, her uncle James Buchanan, who became her guardian when she was orphaned at the age of 11. Harriet Lane came from a prosperous family of merchants in Franklin County, and her uncle supervised her education in private school. In 1854, she accompanied her uncle to England, where Queen Victoria bestowed upon her the rank of ambassador's wife. Harriet Lane was a welcome presence in the White House, especially 
especially after the sadness that was the Franklin Pierce administration. Her poise and spontaneity won national attention. The second portrait here in the parlor is of James Buchanan himself. James Buchanan had a very impressive resume on paper. He was a lawyer. He was a member of the Pennsylvania State Legislature. He was a U.S. representative. He served as Minister to Russia for President Andrew Jackson. He was a U.S. Senator. And he was Secretary of State for James K. Polk. He also served as the U.S. Minister to Great Britain for Franklin Pierce. All this before winning the presidential election of 1856 and becoming our 15th president in 1857. In the 1830s, James Buchanan served as our minister to Russia. The move was made by President Andrew Jackson as a way to get James Buchanan as far away from Washington, D.C. as possible. What Jackson didn't anticipate was that the success that Buchanan had in Russia would bolster his political resume. During his time abroad, James Buchanan traveled in Europe and in Southeast Asia. He made a particular friend in India who sent him this teak wood hand-carved desk as a gift. James Buchanan loved this desk so much that he shipped it from Lancaster, Pennsylvania to Washington, D.C. and used it in the White House during his time as our 15th president. In December of 1865, Mr. Buchanan purchased his Chickering concert piano to replace a previously owned smaller piano. His niece, Harriet Lane, and his sister-in-law, Ann Eliza Buchanan, frequently played the piano. Harriet Lane's music still rests on the piano today. Hanging on the wall here in the sitting room above the piano are two signed lithographs. One is of Queen Victoria and the other is Prince Albert. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert became personal friends of both Harriet Lane and James Buchanan during James Buchanan's time as our minister to Great Britain. These lithographs were presented to Harriet Lane in 1860 on the couple's very first royal tour of America. The last room we're going to visit here at James Buchanan's Wheatland is his bedchamber. And in his bedchamber you'll find something on the floor called a hat tub. This tin-shaped funnel here is what you'd use to take your weekly bath, whether you needed it or not. The hat tub works simply. You stand in the center or you sit, you pour water over yourself, and there's a small space here next to the seat for soap. And that is how you'd bathe in a hat tub. So doing your business during this time period could have been somewhat of an ordeal. You typically had to go outside, you had to contend with the snow and the rain and the wind. This house does have an external outhouse with eight holes of varying sizes for different sized people. However, at nighttime, when it was dark, if you were lucky enough, you may have had a commode. A commode is simply a chair with a hole cut in the center for gravitational reasons. Before you use the chair, you wanna make sure that there's a chamber pot, there's a chamber pot here, tucked under the chair with the lid off, and when you're done, you pull the, the chamber pot, excuse me, back away from the chair, put the lid on, and then in the morning, you'd have one of your domestic servants empty the chamber pot outside. On June 1st, 1868, at the age of 77, James Buchanan passed away in this four-post bed. He was bedridden for many weeks leading up to his death and refused to take his medicine. On the day of his death, James Buchanan requested a glass of water from a spring on the property, and his last words were, O Lord, God Almighty, as thou wilt. Thank you for joining us at James Buchanan's Wheatland. Next time you're in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania and you're looking for something to do that's historical. A bit scientific. And just all around nerdy. Come check out James Buchanan's Wheatland and everything else that Lancaster history has to offer. That's Mr. Graham. That is Mr. Gimby. That's Mr. Raymond. We'll catch you next time for another lesson on the road. Oh, they locked us out. They knew where we're coming back, right? Where's my stuff? I need my fanny pack. <laughs>